Welcome to the weekly update of Israel and Christians today on the 16th of August 2024. Our title for today's podcast is, as always, it is Israel that must pay the price for Islamic terror. Now, the situation in the Middle East threatens to explode. It seems like the quiet before the storm. Israel is being pressured increasingly by the West to give in to extreme Islamic terror in order to protect the West from such terror extending beyond the Middle East. So let's unpack that. As always, it seems Israel is being asked to pay the price for Western timidity with Jewish lives. This has been a consistent pattern over the past 100 years. The Islamic world denies the right of the Jewish people to exist as a nation and launches terror attacks to kill Jews. Israel's allies and friends then pressure her not to respond, and the result is more Jewish lives, renewed terror and conflict. Now, as recently as 2000, the leader of the Palestine Liberation Organization, the PLO, Yasser Arafat, walked out of peace negotiations with Israel and launched the Second Intifada, resulting in hundreds of deaths in Israel. In an effort to foster peace, Israel handed over West Bank cities following the Oslo Accords to the Palestinians and even withdrew unilaterally from the Gaza Strip in 2005. But the whole area of the occupied territories, as they are known, was soon taken over in Gaza by Hamas in a bitter war with the Fatah-led Palestinian Authority based in Ramallah. And since 2007, the Iranian-sponsored organizations in Gaza, particularly Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad, have been attacking Israel with rockets and missiles. And on the 7th of October 2023, they launched a massive invasion of Israel, massacring hundreds and taking hostages. Now, shortly after Israeli forces began a military assault on Gaza in response, Iranian-backed Hezbollah in Lebanon began cross-border attacks on Israel from the north. Israeli fire in response to those attacks initially were confined to Lebanon's border area, but have now targeted senior Hezbollah, Hamas and other figures further north. The conflict with Hezbollah and Iran on Israel's northern border is threatening to escalate. Iran, which is drawing ever closer to nuclear weapons, is also threatening to attack Israel directly in response to the recent elimination of senior Hamas and Hezbollah leaders, including Hamas leader Ismail Haniyeh when he was visiting Tehran, also Hamas deputy political chief Saleh al aruri deputy chief of military operations Marwan Issa, and the commander of Hamas al Qassam brigades, Mohammed Daif. Haniyeh's death came just hours after Israel eliminated Fuad Shuker, also known as Sayyid Musan, in the southern suburbs of Beirut. He was the most senior military commander of the Iranian backed Hezbollah militia in Lebanon. Now, In the last months of his term, U.S. President Biden is desperate to avoid an all-out war in the Middle East. The only way to do this is to placate Iran and its proxies. U.S. envoy Amos Hochstein has arrived in Beirut this week and is reported to have said on Wednesday that he believed all-out war between Israel and Hezbollah could be avoided, but... This means that Israel and Hamas need to move towards a peace agreement for Gaza without further delay. Of course, Hamas is not interested in a ceasefire. It wants to survive. It also does not want to give back the hostages, and it will do everything in its power to make sure that it retains a degree of control in the Gaza Strip. So it looks like Israel is being pressured to agree to a deal with Hamas under which Israel will not get back all the hostages. Israel will not be able to totally destroy Hamas's military capabilities. 
all of this to prevent Hezbollah and Iran from attacking Israel. This means that Israel's right to defend itself and to remove the threat facing it, as every state in the world has that right, is being compromised by the Americans' fear of escalation. Now, in the meantime, to add to all of this, the International Court of Justice in The Hague has advised the General Assembly of the United Nations that Israel's presence in the so-called occupied Palestinian territory, as it is known, is illegal and must be ended as rapidly as possible, and that all Israelis living there must be removed or evacuated, as the court says. This is even though it's widely known that Iran is deeply embedded in the Palestinian-controlled cities in these occupied territories like Jenin and Nablus. According to the Forum for Defense of Democracies, for three years, violence in the West Bank has persisted with no signs of abatement, fueled mainly by Iran-backed terrorist groups, while Israeli forces conduct near-daily counter-terrorism raids. Attacks on Israeli defense forces and civilian targets continue from these so-called occupied territories. Branches belonging to Islamic Jihad, the Al-Aqsa Martyrs Brigade, Hamas and other armed groups not only continue to be operational, but are expanding their presence in the West Bank. End quote. So this was a report by the Forum for Defense of Democracies only a few weeks ago. So, where does this all take us? Apparently blind to the reality of Islamic-sponsored terror on the ground, it looks like the West looks to the Palestinian Authority to pave the way to the establishment of a peaceful Palestinian state living side by side with Israel, the so-called famous two-state solution. The only problem is that the Palestinian Authority not only is corrupt and totally unable to control the growing radicalization in the West Bank, it is far from benign. It's run by Fatah, which has no intention to create a democratic, peace-loving state living side by side with Israel. It wants a state from the river to the sea instead of Israel. And all of this is just shown by the fact that this week Palestinian leader Mahmoud Abbas has been in Moscow to meet with Russian President Vladimir Putin. Abbas declared in the meeting, rest assured, we stand unwaveringly with the Russian Federation. And Putin replied, we stand also unwaveringly with the creation of a Palestinian state. The only thing is nobody's willing to admit that the Palestinian state they have in mind is a state from the river to the sea that will replace Israel. So the world, it seems, has turned upside down, unwilling to confront the reality on the ground. In the meantime, Israel is being called on to compromise, pay the price and give in to ongoing terror and violence from the Islamic-controlled Palestinian territories. Well, that's the end of today. A bit of a somber story, I'm afraid, but it's important we pray into these issues. Not that Israel is perfect, and Israel is making surely many mistakes on the ground, but really at stake is the continuing existence of the Jewish homeland. And uh, at the end of the day, we have to ask ourselves, are we willing to defend the right of the Jewish people to exist as an independent nation? And the answer surely must be yes. Thank you. Have a wonderful weekend. And we look forward to seeing you next week.